Support my content by becoming a patron on patreon.com backslash music. Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of Anime Podcasters. Today it is myself and GoPro Kyo. Kyo the Stampede is in the house in the podcast. How's it going buddy? I didn't think you were going that direction, but I'm doing good. <laughs> Very happy. I'm doing to have pretty good. Today. I'm yeah, happy to be to back hear. on. I watched the. I re, I did some rewatching for this episode, which was which was nice to go back and watch one of my old favorites. Yes, and we finally get to do a full video podcast on this. episodes. Yes, I in all podcast, seriousness that too. Yeah, in all seriousness, the topic today is one that has been in the works for. A, uh, basically, since episode one, we were telling ourselves we need to talk about this anime at some point. It's. Uh, Basically, 80 episodes later, basically, and we're here. Finally, yeah. we are talking about Trigun, Vash the Stampede. Now, now, let's address this real quickly. I think some p- folks might be a little confused because we did have a quote-unquote side anime podcast on it. It was more like just uh, getting Jayan's initial thoughts on it and just me kind of gushing about uh, with him about the show. But this time we're going to go a little more in depth and we're also going to answer a couple audience questions. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And that okay. w- that podcast was what, like 2016, 2017? It was a while ago. <sighs> Man. It's Time goes by been, fast. Almost five, year, almost five years of podcasting. Just about there. Yeah, we're almost there. All, All right. right. Well, anyway, let's, uh, let's yeah. go ahead and get started. Yes. All right. I always start with this question because I think it's the it's a good way to kick off any anime based topic. Um, I really want to know how you found out about Trigon. Uh, what got you into it and your initial impressions of Trigon? So I'll be honest. The first time that I heard about Trigon, I actually. So, like, I don't know if you remember these days, Jayan, but, like, there was a time, there was a long time ago on the internet where songs did not get copyrighted nearly as much as they do now. But, uh, basically what happened was, like, so I was looking for a particular song by ACDC, the song Big Gun, which was, uh, which was a new favorite song for me at the time. And, uh, somehow I stumble upon this anime AMV that just had clips of Trigun interspliced with the song. So, uh, I was interested in it because the last anime I had watched before that was, uh, um, like, before I had, or, like, this was honestly, like, the first, like, official anime that I delved into head first. So, like, uh... <clears throat> like I had used to watch like Pokemon when I was uh, younger. Like we all we all went through that point, right? Oh yes, no? we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, um, I eventually uh found that like uh, all the episodes were available on YouTube and by Funimation themselves. They posted them on their YouTube channel, and originally they used to have all the episodes like both subbed and dubbed because the uh or like it. Because, like, back then, uh, revenue was generated by clicks as opposed to watch time, which is different now, obviously. But, um, anyway, like, I, I watched it from, uh, start to uh, about halfway through. Uh, I fell out of it, and then a year later when Netflix, uh, Instant became a thing, I found it was on Netflix, so I binged through the entire show. That And that was, that's pretty much my whole story for it. I mean, like, it's been kind of a big inspiration to me artistically because like that was both the first anime I ever watched like religiously from start to finish it's like eh, 26 episodes or something like that and uh like I started drawing the characters I started like taking uh tips from how to draw anime books stuff like that so it kind of I would have to say it kind of kick-started my artistic career in a way you know no definitely I remember you being uh, have always been very drawn to this series and it's been your favorite for the longest time like basically since i've known you we've we've talked about this uh series on and off podcast and yeah. so you you recommended it to me and you told me jayanne you need to watch trigun and yeah i was I, so I happy recommend that I, did. I recommend this to a lot of people because like it's uh for me personally i think it's very like it's not as uh it's not as amazingly written as like Cowboy Bebop is, but I think it would be like a step beneath it. Like it's just, it's almost to that point because it's not as heavily Japanese influenced as like other other shows that we watch. It's a little more focused on just telling a story in its own world. Yeah, and it's more, and it's it's just got really good. It's got really good characters. It's got a really cool uh, setting. 
uh, a really cool plot. Like I, I recommend it to people who are like, uh, like you ever have people who are like, I'm, I want to get into anime, but I don't want to start with like the, like say the fan servicey stuff. Like people are kind of turned off by anime because of that sort of thing. So no, like, definitely. uh, yeah, so like you recommend them stuff like Cowboy Bebop, uh, Naruto, or uh, uh, but and like for me, Trigun is always one of the ones that I throw in there because it's it's not you don't have to know Japanese culture as much to enjoy it, it which is I why I think uh, like it's which is why I think it's one of the better better anime shows ever really. No, definitely. I just remember when um, I started the first episode and it was Vash basically being trailed and gunned down by all of these people who wanted mm-hmm. him because yeah. they, what was his bounty? Like, I know the currency wasn't double dollars. It was like 60 billion or something like that. Like, 60 billion. Yeah. Yeah. 60 billion double dollars, which I was like, okay, so this tr- obviously this guy's wanted. Like, is he a criminal? I wasn't sure. And very, very early on, I got just very attached to who he was as a character because like he just had a really good moral code and he could, mm-hmm. you know, decipher good from bad very easily. And he got himself in these very like, not desperate, but like really tough situations, and you always wondered um how he would pull it off. He he had this mm-hmm. resilience. Uh, one that now I think about it, it, it makes me think a lot of. Uh, I will want to go too down this rabbit hole, but it really made me think of Onizuka from Great Teacher Onizuka. Uh, Vash Vash and him share this resilience of uh, a lot is put against them, but they pull through every time. And mm. I think that um. What uh, Vash also has uh, that I really enjoyed is like the teamwork he developed with with uh, Millie and with Meryl and with uh, Nicholas, everything like that. Um, just it was just really good, and the the story I liked how it was like Cowboy Bebop, where um, it, the episodes you, obviously there is a plot and we do follow along, but like the Cowboy Bebop, there's not too much connectivity connectivity between each episode which i really yeah enjoyed with that. with cowboy bebop there's like certain there's like a couple of episodes that are intricate that do have like a story arc between a little like bit more yeah, than, yeah more than more than one episode but there's no overall goal for the entire show whereas trigon yeah. there is an overall goal it just doesn't show itself until a little bit later in the show. Right. It's, ve- right. it's a very, it, the Trigon has a very slow burn with its uh, story. So like if you like the characters, then you'll probably get into it. If you, if you just want to see these characters, then you'll, you'll like it. Honestly. No, the, the characters are, are great. And Vash is, mm-hmm. I know it, it's like that main character trope, but like he is my favorite character. I think, um, now that I think about it, I, I was very much into, um, Wolfwood, he was like my favorite for a long time, but now just thinking about it, uh, I'm gonna pull a hot shot. And I'm gonna switch real quick here. Um, I really, mm-hmm. really like Vash. Um, I just really, as a protagonist, he carries the story so well. You you root for him every step of the way, right. and you really want him to succeed, whatever happens in the series. So that's what I I like the most of, about him. What about you? Uh, favorite characters, standout characters for you? Uh, on on uh, man, there's. <sighs> Man, I like all the characters. I like all of them a little too much to pick one, but like if I have to pick one, I'll have to say Vash is probably my favorite character. No, oh, yeah, no, definitely. I also his nickname, the Humanoid Typhoon. I've said this before. Such a badass name. like nickname. I Dude, love like, it. It's got such. It's got such a Western Mad Max feel mm-hmm. to it. Like, oh man, it, like they. There's such a like nice way of like spinning like legend and rumor into into their like into their world like the way that they pass information onto each other it's all like word of mouth there's like no social media or there's no like uh, or like there's no like real long term or a long yeah sorry long term uh uh communication so it's all spread word of mouth and it feels very much like like an old west sort of uh sort of world what did you think about his? Um, I I I asked you this in the Cowboy Bebop podcast. How uh, you know, being a bounty hunter, being a wanted man in this westernized, techy lifetime. I don't know how else to put it. Um, how, how did you feel about mm-hmm. about like this? Just the structure of the anime, where he goes from town to town, and you know, he comes across the Nebraska brothers, and just how how the plot mm-hmm. and everything is is structured. How, how did you l- like that? Well, like, I like that there's no immediate, like, goal for the whole thing. Like, there's Mm -hmm. a set, or, like, there's a set, uh, sort of, um, like, like, Vash himself has his own goal, 
or it's not, I guess it's not really a goal. It's just more of like, he just has to survive day to day because like he's been wrongly accused spoilers, by the way, that's what these podcasts are all about. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we don't tell I don't know why you guys watch this if you're not ready for spoilers. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, anyway, uh, I like, I like that there's a mystery of like, we know that Vash did something, but like the way that they show us how, or like his person, like his character is very much like, it doesn't match up with the rumors that you're hearing when you hear it from the other background characters who are like, oh, the, like they just list like these, uh, like tall tale sort of, uh, feats that he's accomplished and but like everybody's afraid of him but like you actually see the character and you have this moment of like disbelief like Meryl is the character who you kind of relate to in the sense that like she also doesn't believe it because for the first four five up for uh four episodes Meryl doesn't believe that that's Vash the Stampede right I remember that so like she doesn't yeah so like you're kind of with Meryl for that majority of the ep the show in trying to discover like like as you know from like as an audience person that it is Vash that that's the character because like you're 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 observing it and you're seeing all the all of the story from all angles but Meryl is just seeing it from based on the way that he acts so in a way, the show is doing the same thing by showing you that, like, all of the rumors are fake. But the for by the fourth episode, it finally shows you how and why people think he is, like, this, uh, this entity of destruction. This hurricane. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> great, great word choice, Jayan. No, but in all seriousness, I <laughs> really think that Meryl is the perspective of the audience for those first four episodes. And and the more I'm talking to you, the more I'm remembering this anime and the more it's coming back to me now. Mm -hmm. Um, I also remember her, her and, uh, in Millie, like, I felt like she was not, not like Millie was like riding her coattails, but like Meryl was basically, you know, like do this and do that. Like, but she had more of the leadership and she, she helped guide Millie, uh, and they were a good humorous team together, but like yeah. Meryl really like pulled, um, and like really was the the reason why Millie, um, how can I say, uh, how Millie was, she basically was a side character too. Uh, Meryl is what I felt like the more I'm thinking back to Millie. Yeah. Would you would how would you remember Millie being, uh, especially with Meryl? M Millie is the uh, like kind of the ditzy kind of uh, mm -hmm. a little a little aloof. I think is a good word for her. Uh, she's not she's not stupid she's just a little absent-minded like she that, yeah. is or she's very simple minded like she just thinks in very straightforward in a very straightforward sense but Meryl has like a very logical kind of mind so she just uh like she has a goal or like she'll have like a set goal and then she'll uh, like Mentally, she'll just calculate everything humanly possible to make sure that she gets to that goal. And she's just focused on looking at everything from a logical perspective as opposed to, like, uh, like a creative perspective. Right, but what, wasn't she her assistant now that I think back about it? Didn't she, like, just assist her? Like, if Meryl wanted something, Millie had to do it kind of thing? It wasn't, was that it or not? Oh, uh, they, they were more like, uh, they were more like, uh, like co-workers, really. So... Like they were both uh, put on the same job because they work really well together. Mm -hmm. uh, I or we didn't even say exactly what they do. They're uh, so Millie and Merrill are the uh, it insurance. The insurance. Yeah, agents. yeah. It was insurance. Yes. Yeah. So their whole. So the whole point of these two characters is that their insurance company. Yes, this is actually how it's going down. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it's weird to think that they have an insurance agency in an anime. Like you've never really. That's also something you never really hear about. Really, you know. Why not, Kyo? Why not? Or it's kind of like you never hear the insurance agency in like the Marvel movies or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, definitely. But anyway, these characters are sent out to find Vash the Stampede, keep him under surveillance, and prevent like uh prevent event or prevent uh Vash from doing anything destructive so that way uh the insurance company doesn't go under or doesn't have to pay for all the damage that keeps being caused. So or that's just that's just the long and short of like what their purpose is. But obviously like uh very human things get in the way very um very non like 
are very much stuff that they wouldn't have expected to be getting into because to them they they think they're just going into just they're just doing a job but like they kind of uh later on bite off more than they can chew and then they just they just kind of get roped into everything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um i want to shift my our attention maybe more to wolfwood i loved wolfwood okay wood, yeah go ahead and i you know what mm-hmm. i remember okay so more spoilers here but i just remember texting you in all caps being so mad and just what the hell is going on that's so unfair <laughs> when wolfwood passes you away. were texting me mom you were texting me moment to moment during the episode where wolfwood dies oh my gosh i was like and then at the, the end hell? you were just like yeah you were <laughs> i like if oh man like are we just gonna start with the fact that he died and not talk about his character first? All right, now let's talk about Legato. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> let's move over to the next character. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no. Um, yeah. he felt like a like a, a sidekick to Vash, but he 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 held his own. Like I would definitely consider him to be a main character. I don't remember the specifics of it. Like he carried this cross. He was a smoker. He helped out Vash a lot. I, I mean. What? Tell me, tell me more about Wolfwood. Well, so Wolfwood is kind of just a was kind of just a passerby at first, and uh, basically he gets roped into a situation where he has to show uh, that, like, on the outside he's a priest, so he is supposed to be a man of the cloth. He's supposed to be uh, he's going on a pilgrimage basically, and uh, he's getting into these situations where he has to. Uh, help pay for uh, pay for this orphanage that he works for. Basically, this orphanage is his home. He he grew up there himself, but he's also uh, trying to make it better for the children that he's uh, protecting. Basically, he's doing it for the kids, Keo. <clears throat> but uh, yes, <laughs> basically, he sees no other way to uh, survive and thrive in this uh, in this uh, world without having to kill people whereas vash's character is the complete opposite he believes that uh peace is completely possible through uh non-violence or and not killing people like he'll do everything possible to not kill people which is one which is another aspect that i think is why a lot of people like vash is because vash is uh very what's the word for it he's very altruistic he's very much focused on uh, the needs of others above himself. Oh my gosh! Which yes. I think is one of those things that makes him. I really want to get into that. And like, quick parentheses. I just remember Vash not being able to hurt any bad guy for the longest time. He he, he oh yeah. He couldn't bring himself to doing it. And I just it, wasn't it Legato who like put the gun to his head and he wouldn't like even pull the trigger. Like some scene like that happened or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like. I was, yeah. There's a scene later on where Legato. So Legato has like the power to like con- uh, manipulate people to a certain degree. Yeah. And like he eventually got it to the point where Vash had no choice but to pull the trigger and kill Legato, which is ultimately what he wanted, which is a really painful scene to sit through because uh Legato because the whole point is that like Legato wins in a way and Vash has broken his own moral code. Yeah, I- it's really funny like I just want to put this like for a quick uh legato in musical terms is when you uh when you put two notes like when you connect two notes and and, and the the musician plays them in a in a smooth way um when they transition from note to note do, do you think that has anything to do with his name because i just why would you name him like legato you know what i mean do, do you feel like that has any connectivity to like his name or his character or anything um i don't i don't know like i I didn't really think about it that way. I didn't even know that till now. So, I mean, <laughs> no, 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 of course, of course, just I was, I was, kind of, yeah, just just kind of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting uh, fun fact about him, I guess. Yes, yes. I just want because I just feel like Legato was this really evil guy in this mental way. I didn't, and I wasn't there like also. He's a very psychological. Yeah. he's a very psychological villain. Yes. Is what you're thinking? Yes, exactly. I felt like yeah. he just Definitely. manipulated people and screwed with people he was like an evil ibiki ibiki from naruto 
You see what I mean? Yeah. That's how I perceived mm-hmm. them. Um, and but wasn't there a scene with him in a bar where he just uh, like a bunch of people got gunned down? I know that's like that scene happened like everywhere. So like, I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna like argue this in general. Like a lot of uh, I think a lot of really good movies and stories have like like I think bar scenes are a really good way to establish a character <laughs> because the way so you put this character into a room and you give that and you just put like any kind of random thug into like in their way and the way that the character reacts kind of is very telling of how that person's personality is so like for example when vash uh is first introduced uh we see him like calmly uh just getting up and holding his gun after this entire bar has been demolished mm-hmm. and he's the only thing standing the uh <laughs> the next scene which flashback which is a flashback. Uh, he uh, holds up his gun and his gun is empty. So it's him reacting and dodging the bullets and running off. Like every which is a funny other scene. scene. Which is actually a pretty funny scene. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And then there, but then there's the, the scene with Legato, which is the complete opposite, which is him uh, like avoiding conflict to a certain point. But then when they push things too far, he, uh, he, he manipulates uh, things to things to go his way. And it's, a really creepy scene and like pretty much all the i if i as i recall all the characters died except for uh some of the prisoners of a certain uh of, of a certain gang exactly but, but going it's back, been a while since i've seen that episode but i do remember that yeah, i want to go back to what you were saying about the bar scenes i feel like these bar scenes are so prevalent throughout the entire anime i feel like every other episode there was this gun down bar scene of a fight that Vash didn't want to get into it but some uh, some drunk right. thug hey you did you like stare at me wrong like I saw you from over there and like you're the main <laughs> character so I have to like screw with you for like three minutes you know uh, basically like, I, I feel like right. that was very much within a Trigun every other episode and it just it was a good excuse for some great fight scenes bro it is yeah <laughs> like if you want a good fight we, scene we kind of trailed scene. off from I think we kind of trailed off from Wolfwood there from Legato, because all we said about Wolfwood is that he died, remember? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else about Wolfwood? But, uh, can, can we jump back to that real quick? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, Wolfwood is a character who, uh, despite his, uh, despite his like appearance in his supposed, like the first impression you would get off of a guy who's dressed as a priest, is that the idea is that he should be the more passive one, whereas Vash, the perceived gunslinger, is the actual really passive one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which I think is a re- which is a really cool character dynamic. You just like like they have a Naruto and Sasuke kind of vibe except they don't necessarily hate each other. They just kind of have like uh they they just have kind of a friendly rivalry to the point where they 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 see themselves in each other but they don't hate what they see in one another. I think that's I think that's the best way I can describe it honestly. No, I I see where you're coming from with that. And yeah. I just I just, I loved Wolfwood. He was just this very cool, calm character. And whenever he had something to say, you would just kind of perk your ears and be like, "Oh, Wolfwood! Like, what's going down in this episode with him?" And I really liked the fight scenes with him and Vash, where they mm-hmm. their teamwork is really great. And uh, I yeah, I, I I just great character, great great complimentary character to Vash. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Should we talk about Rem? Rem. Oh, Rem. Boy. Oh boy! The mother, the mother, the mother of this whole. If she hadn't saved those two children, this would not be a problem. Rem is the reason why we're <laughs> podcasting about this. That's true. <laughs> and Rem gave us one of the greatest anime fights at the end of Trigun because those brothers hate each other, and the whole. I just remember <laughs> that whole spaceship thing was so messed up, and how knives at such a young age. Was such a screwy God, kni- knives is such a cool like a such. I love and hate that character. He is so much. He is so much fun to watch. Like just the like, like not even just knives, but just like the dynamic between the two. I I think there's a little bit of similarity between knives and Wolfwood, but knives is a little bit more on the extreme side. So I think so. I think that like the contrast still works, right? Uh, with it, but anyway. Uh, what or what were you saying? You can you can go ahead. So I just I remember the Project Seeds was was basically a thing because 
knives and, and Vash aren't exactly human. They they also have like some plant DNA or something like that. And I just remember this whole uh spaceship situation where she was basically trying to save them both from some sort of attack and then it all fell apart. Like this is I am trying I, I'm literally going like as far back in my brain. I'm trying to remember how this whole situation mm-hmm. develops. But she, she's basically the reason why there's a screw up at the end, right? Is, is, isn't that what happens? Mm-hmm. Like, could, could you fill in the blanks here for me and the audience? Yeah. So basically, Rem is part of this crew of people uh, who have taken this large ship or this fleet of ships, actually, to go to another planet because Earth, We obviously, we fucked it up. Same as Cowboy Bebop, I think. It's kind of the same, uh, kind, of, kind of the same backstory, I think, with uh, uh, Earth. It wasn't Earth just like uninhabitable, basically. We screwed up, Keo. We didn't listen. Yeah, I we know. didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving that silence. I, I mean, you can't me. say. I, I mean, you can't see it, but I shook my head. So <laughs> I know I can feel the shaking. <laughs> you can feel. <laughs> you can feel it. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> ba- essentially, what happens is these uh, characters are taking these cryo sleep people to another world, so that way they can uh, build a new. Uh, society for humans because humans fucked up earth uh they're just mo- they're just moving to find a new colony to start humanity new uh just basically give humanity a second chance but and uh these so like i'm just gonna say this right now like i have in fact read the entirety of the trigun manga because there's or there's a uh, there's a sequel series called trigun maximum that they never made into an anime just because the uh basically because like the original anime didn't uh wasn't very was sadly not very popular which is a real honestly a real shame yeah but um but basically these uh there are these creatures called plants they produce energy they the this energy has been harnessed by people to power their ships power their uh power their cities just uh but vash and Knives are uh, basically the last two uh, or like one of the last two plant offspring to be produced. I don't know. the I don't know the specifics and I don't remember the specifics. It's been years since I've read this thing. But um, <clears throat> so basically Rem saved them. They were about to be uh, destroyed because like the humans thought like this is unnatural. This isn't how this is supposed to work. But Rem saves Vash and Knives. She becomes their uh, adoptive mother. She starts raising them and apparently they grow faster than they normally should. And I'm not going to lie. I actually did in fact calculate how old Vash should be. He's somewhere around 200 years old. At this point, at this point in time, as we're recording the podcast, <laughs> is that what you're saying? No, or er- <laughs> or in the sure. anime i know i'm actually confused in in the an, in the anime like in the in the anime when we meet him in the uh or like when you meet him in episode one he's about i would say i think he's a hundred and thirty years old if i recall damn but i i did some like rough calculations a long time ago Quick maths. yeah yeah <laughs> but <laughs> but that's me like knowing way too much about this anime and the manga. Anyway, Rem is their adoptive mother, and what exactly happens with uh, the ship is Knives uh, disco- or like becomes the yin to Vash's yang. They, their philosophies are opposing. Uh, like, the best way that they explain it is this scene where, uh, where there's a spider and a butterfly, and the butterfly is stuck in the web, and Vash goes to let the the butterfly out, and but uh, <clears throat> but um, knives goes and kills the spider because he says if you keep freeing the butterflies, the spider's just gonna die anyway. You might as well just kill the spider. But so like in that sense, so like in that sense, you kind of already see how their philosophies are opposing. Vash wants to save everybody, but isn't always aware of the fact that like there are consequences to saving everybody. Whereas knives is like, don't save anybody just, or like, don't save the, don't save the lesser of the two evils. Just kill those who are in your way. So like that pushes knives into the direction of uh, manipulating the entire crew into killing each other, except for Rem. 
and then when they all try to escape the exploding ship, uh, Knives is trying to destroy both the humans and just leave it so that way him and Vash are alive on on the planet that they've discovered. It's all coming back but to me now. But Rem saves all the people, and yeah. Yeah, but Rem saves a, a good chunk of the uh, crowd, the sleeping people, and then that leads to the society that we know of in the Trigun series. I wanted to I wanted to go to this. I was like doing some research for the podcast, and apparently in 2010 there was a uh, Trigon movie that came out. Do you need this? Yeah, yeah. Trigon Badlands. Have you ne- Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't seen. it. I'm gonna watch it, and we're gonna do a podcast about it, buddy. You need to check. You need to check it out. It's actually a really good uh, one off story. So like, don't, it, don't spoil. I actually spoil. saw no. it. Not that I'm not. I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm just going to say, like, I saw it not long after the uh, I had finished the anime. It was, like, after Netflix. And I went out and bought the movie. And the movie was... That doesn't matter how much it was. But I went out and uh, <laughs> I got my uh, Vash plushie, some popcorn, and uh, <laughs> and just sat down and watched the movie. And uh, it's, it's one of my favorite movies. It's kind of one of those generic, like... Uh, uh, one-off movies. You know how, like, in the Naruto movies, they don't really have a, uh, they don't connect to the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, like, the like, main storyline? Yeah. They just have, like, that one-off non-canon story, mm-hmm. but it could be canon, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, like, it's kind of like that, but with Trigun, it's like, you could just see this as, like, another one of Vash's adventures, like, between episodes, but it just specifically pits it, like, after he's met Wolfwood, so... It just leaves you with, like, it's between these two points in time, basically. Okay, I see. Uh, so, uh, yeah. But, like, if you're going to if you're gonna watch it, I I definitely go say go go and check it out because it's, oh, my gosh, it's so awesome. <laughs> I will. I will. Um, And then uh, the other character, we kind of talk, talked about him a little bit, but I really wanted to get into Knives as well. Um, I just, mm-hmm. I think yes, we, I think we, 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 you said a, a, a good enough chunk on him, but, um, uh, what I love the most about Knives is the fight against uh, him and Vash at the very end. Are you kidding me? That oh, fight. Man. The final. The was final episode so is probably the like the final episode is probably the peak of how good that show is. Mm-hmm. Like there is a little, there is a tiny point of contention. Like I'll or like I'll just say like, uh, I, I know we're not saying I know that we're saying spoilers, but like I feel like I shouldn't. Is all. <laughs> Dude, we're talking about the final episode. Like, I was gonna... <laughs> that you know what? Yeah, that's a good point. So, like, I, I, I think that there's a little bit of point of contention. Some people are just like, he should have just killed knives. Others are just like, no, it's very in character. My only problem is that, like, uh, Vash says at the end, like, I'm just gonna follow my own path, and I'm like, well, if he follows your own path, you probably would have just killed your brother instead of like that would have been more surprising than him letting him live. But I don't know. It's a uh, there's a nice, there's a nice bit of catharsis to it. It's got a pretty strong ending. The actual fight between them is actually really, it's actually really entertaining, and it it keeps you on the edge of your seat from like start to finish. No, I love it. I love it. And I just remember how they're just pointing the gun yeah, at each other, me too. And, and then just keep bouncing back and forth at the at the very end when uh, Vash is carrying uh, um, knives in his arms as the as he's walking back and. Oh man. Um. Okay. I gotta ask mm-hmm. you this: favorite fight in all of, um, the series. My favorite. My favorite fight scene. Yeah. Favorite fight. Oh. Okay. Um. I have quite. I have quite a few, but like, um, I'm gonna have to say the the fight in episode four where Vash finally whips out his gun and uses uh only six shots to defeat the about the Nebraska brothers. It is so it is like, it's so amazing because it's been built up for three whole episodes. And then by the time you get to that point, you're already kind of like you, you've been teased of like Vash actually using his gun for that whole segment or all three of those episodes. And when he finally does, it's probably one of the most satisfying uh, fight scenes you'll ever see. My reaction to that was like, about time! Like, you you have 60 billion double yeah, dollars, right? <laughs> all this crazy, you're amazing stuff, like, show me. Episode 1, okay, you can run around. Episode 2, episode 3, episode 4, you're like, ah, oh, 
okay, okay, there's something to this dude. Okay, um, I have to agree. <laughs> it's such a great fight, and I, I'm gonna have to say that my favorite fight is the. I know a cop out, but final, the final fight that the the arm with the, the, his arm kill, the explosion. And I know we have questions <laughs> about this, and I don't want to like go too much into it, but boom, bro, boom. <laughs> It's great. I love. I love. I love this anime through and through. And now I, 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 the more we're talking about it, the more I want to watch it. And and it's, it's one of these things where I've, yeah. I've seen this anime, like I said, a few years ago. And you know, I've seen more anime since. I've seen. I've seen it uh, two or three times actually, because uh, I saw it on my own by myself for the first time, and then the second time I introduced it to Austin. Austin was Austin was really into it. Like he, he, he was invested from start to finish, and like that. That just made me really happy that he was into it. Also, and, yeah. sadly, he couldn't join because yeah. he's not feeling too well. Sorry. No, I know. A hot shot. If you're listening, I would love. I would have loved to hear his thought. His thoughts on this whole thing. Yeah. Like, uh, of, like, like 100%. He, he, I would have loved to have he- heard like his unique take on this whole thing. It would have been nice, but, but hey, here we are. Here we are. It's all right. It's okay. Um, should we get into the audience questions, Gio? Um. Yeah, you know what? Let's get let's go ahead and jump into that. All right. Why not? Uh, I sent them to you. So, do you want me to say them? I, I feel like you're going to be better suited to answer them. So, uh, do you want me to read them out and then you'll uh, you'll answer the questions, or do you want to read them out? Whatever you prefer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and uh, read them out, and I'll I'll try and answer them the best. The best you can. You the trigon. The, the best. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. The best I can. Not not. I'm I'm the best at answering them. That's not what I mean. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Heth Merritt. I mean, so far I've spent like. So far, I've spent like five or ten minutes like rambling about each question you've got for me. So <laughs> more rambling. All right, Heath Merritt asks, "Why yeah, the angel nuke arm thing?" And that's such a good way to describe it. I, I, valid questions. <laughs> These are the questions we need answers for. Um, because it's awesome, right? <laughs> what? Why else? I mean, I guess you can give the actual reason why, because that's how he was genetically formed. I guess. Well, I mean, because it's cool. <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> I mean, that's my first answer, but <laughs> no. Uh, well, like he basically shows the. Uh, so, like, basically, if you watch the, I'm pretty sure it's the final episode where uh, they just go through it and they explain uh, that knives built them from like pieces of the uh, pieces of the uh, ship that they fell from, and he made them so that way he can destroy. Uh, and so that way he can destroy humans, basically, or just, like, wipe out uh, the settlements that they, or the, uh, so, like, all the crash sites are where the towns are in this world. So, like, whenever you came across a, a world or a town in the, in one of those episodes, that was where, like, one of the, uh, the early ships had crashed. And then they, they built their towns around that because they had the generators with the plants inside of them. Anyway. So, like, the whole plan was, like, that uh, Knives wanted to, uh, like, destroy those settlements so that he could, he and Vash could have the world to themselves, but, uh, but Vash didn't really want to do that, but I don't know why he kept the gun in the first place. He may, may as well have just thrown it out or something, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's why the angel arm nuke thing. <laughs> okay, and the next question from Rene Jimenez, the ask... Uh, do you think we'll ever get a main sequel? I guess, like you said, the manga continues after the series. Do you think that's ever going to become an anime or yeah. something else after um, this? I would love to say yes, but, uh, I mean, so, like, the the author of this uh, show has stated that this is one of, that this is his favorite uh, series, or at least I recall him saying that. I could be wrong, but... He said it was his favorite series. It's a little more popular here than it is in Japan, but it's still not as big as it should be. I think it should have. I think it. I think because Cowboy Bebop was so much more uh, popular and so and a little, it, it had a little bit more less. Uh, it, I guess it just grabbed people a little bit more than Trigun did, probably because Trigun still has like a very anime flavor to it, so people didn't gravitate towards it as much. No, but, I, uh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I would love to see a sequel series, but as it is, I'd I'd rather it be as it is, as opposed to being like Dragon Ball, where it's been milked so much that uh, its content is somewhat dry in my eyes. No, I see what you mean. Um, a fair opinion, but um, like I, w- I mean, I mean, I haven't really watched Super, but like every time Austin asks me why am I not watching Dragon Ball Super. 
it's because I've already seen Dragon Ball because Dragon Ball can only do the same thing so many times before I'm not interested it interested in in it anymore. Whereas like Trigon just had its store had its one story. It got from start to finish and it got it got the majority of the manga and the manga was just just kind of a pageant project and then the anime just and then the anime was made and they did what they wanted to do and then they made the movie and then they were happy with it so i mean like i'm perfectly fine with it but i would love to i would be curious to see what they come up with if they did do another one yeah here's what i'm gonna say i think crazier things have happened like for example I'd lo- or, i mean I lo- I'd, I'd love to hear your uh your thoughts on that too Jayam. yeah um, what I'm trying to get at here is I think an OVA is possible because we've seen Yu Yu Hakusho's 25th year anniversary. Uh, yeah. Big OVA came out, and so this thing came out in 2008. So 2023, uh, 1998, 2023 is something going to come out? Maybe. Uh, we don't know. Um, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. I mean, a movie came out in 2010, which was 12 years after the fact, so... It could possibly mm-hmm. there, there could always be something. So that's a that's a good question right. to 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 put on the on the Trigon subreddit or something like or petition. Let's make a petition. Yeah. And sh- I mean, I I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to seeing an OVA, but like my only thing is that like I'm perfectly like me personally I'm content with it. It's kind of like if uh, Cowboy Bebop got like a continuation. We don't really need that because like Cowboy Bebop didn't have a beginning or like a an end goal. It just kind of had, it was just kind of like an excuse to show these characters and show their backstories. It was much more character driven than story driven. No, I know. But and like, if you made a, made a, if you made another show about it, which I mean, we're getting the live action one. That's just more of an homage. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Exactly. Way to make it. it. It's more of an homage and it's more so to kind of just like introduce it to a newer generation kind of, I mean, like personally, the whole like adaptation thing, there could be a whole another podcast on that. But um, well, there is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is a podcast on that. That's true. Go check that out. <laughs> yeah, Q and I are doing updates for the Cowboy Bebop live action uh, coming out every other month. That when we get news about something, very consistent scheduling on that one. Oh yes, the most consistent. <laughs> um, I think that's gonna be uh, that's everything for the questions. So let's get into final thoughts here. Um. I'm going to I'm going to let you close out Kyo because this is this is your baby and I want you to close out with uh, your final <laughs> thoughts. Uh I'm going to say that well, I'd love to hear I'd love to hear your thoughts uh first if that's okay. Yeah, I'd of like course, to of course. Um, hear what you have to say cuz I mean like I feel like I've been talking a lot more than you have today so just I want to hear some I want to hear some Jayan for a little d- there's while. There's literally 70 plus more episodes of me talking more than usual so i mean this is completely fine um that's true yeah. but but there's not enough of about you talking of you talking about trigon so <laughs> we're just gonna loop this um in all seriousness yeah <laughs> um, i was so happy that you recommended this podcast this podcast this uh anime to me i really really enjoyed the entire structure of the, of the podcast uh, oh my god of the anime i'm so sorry um what i like i said what i loved the most was really vash being able to carry the series from start to end and you really got to see him grow and develop as the anime got through it and the action was packed the teamwork was there the characters were you know really very 3d to me where they had so much depth you could feel their emotions and you could really get into the the structure and the narrative of the anime um it was greatly on a technical point of view i loved the music in trigon and i think i've covered one trigon song ever um and now i'm thinking about I think it you, i think yeah i think you did and like you know what that's another thing that's one thing we didn't talk a whole lot about but i'm sure we could ha- uh talk about the mu- the music a whole lot too if we wanted to but i guess this podcast is long enough i mean very western style music very cowboy music um i loved it and a uh, quick side note i had yeah. um, an assignment because i'm studying film music right now i had an assignment where i had to make music for a film a western genre and i like i just listened to the Ooh. cowboy bebop osts and i was like oh this sounds kind of you know i just went into the blue scale i was like oh yes feel like trigun what what would vash do right now <laughs> so i mean um <laughs> it influenced me a lot even in my craft so um Great anime, definitely worth the watch. And uh, can I, I give you like a quick little? Can I give like a quick little story regarding the music? Actually, sure, sure, go ahead. <laughs> so like, uh, I was about like fourteen when I first saw this show, and I actually like loved the music so much that I actually uh, bought the soundtrack on iTunes a long time ago. And so like, I added the music onto my phone, 
And at one point, my parents heard me listening to, uh, I think the song is Blue Funk. It's like a really, uh, it's a really like good mix of like blues and uh, Western music. But like uh, my dad came by and he was like, oh, that sounds nice. Uh, who's the, or that's a good soundtrack. What's that uh, from? And I said, oh, it's from an anime. He's like, it's Japanese, really? Like he was just kind of surprised by it because he had heard me like listening to uh, other anime stuff and like it was not really it, it's not very conventional and I thought yeah it's actually not something you hear in anime most of the time like you hear a lot more uh, I guess I guess like uh, sort of more orchestral kind of stuff mm-hmm. uh, or maybe uh, I, I don't know how to describe like regular anime music it's all it, a lot of it kind of blurs together for me sometimes. But like, yeah, or that's just uh, that. That was just like kind of a cute story that I thought about. No, of course, when, of course. When you brought up the music, and with your final thoughts, Kyo. Um, if you guys haven't seen Trigun, You're spoiled. firstly, why are you watching this podcast? <laughs> yeah, you, we spoiled the pod, sto- spoiled the show for you. Now you have no reason to watch it. But please go watch it and subscribe because <laughs> you can get spoiled by other animes. So I just, I mean, why not? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you haven't seen Trigun yet, I would highly recommend it. Um, just about, just as good, if not better than Cowboy Bebop. It's just, it's just my own personal bias. I'm completely aware that, like, which one is better, but I have, I just have my own personal taste, and this is, that. that's just what I, this is just the show that I would, would prefer to watch over Cowboy Bebop if it were brought up. But, yeah, I highly recommend that you guys check it out if you uh, want to find it. It's available on uh, Funimation, Crunchyroll, and on, I believe, I believe it's available on YouTube. I could be wrong. Eh. But just, yeah, that's my, fi- away, that, those are my final it. thoughts. Of course. No, great, great one, points Yes, across. one search away, you'll find it. Oh, wait. No, that's right. It's on Hulu. It's on all of the things. It's on all of the things, yes. <laughs> all right. So. The artwork for anime podcasters is provided by GoPro Kiyom. Go follow him on Twitter at GoPro Kiyo. Um, and do you have yeah. anything else you want to plug? No, seriously, just plug away, uh, Kiyo. Uh, just watch for my channel. I got videos coming out pretty soon. Uh, I got another speed paint coming up, and I've also got another uh, fully produced uh, video. It's little ways little ways out, but it's not it's not too far away. But uh, yeah, go go check out my channel. You can check out my website for. Uh, artwork commissions and uh yeah if you, and i also recommend that you guys go follow mr at giant music on twitter yes my twitter is at giant music i do all the uh, audio editing for anime podcasters i'm available for commission um so if you want to he makes music and it's really good what co- and i love it oh stop it you're making me blush good um in all seriousness um <laughs> So at Giant Music on Twitter, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Giant Music. And if you want to follow the podcast, you can always follow us on your favorite podcaster. I just I expand the podcast. We're on literally iHeartRadio right now. So we're literally in any podcatcher you look up. There's too many. I can't list them out anymore. There's too many. Uh, but obviously, uh, subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a five-star review wherever you are. And yep. uh that is going to be everything. And obviously, go follow uh, at Caution Ginger. I'm sure he's working on some great stuff. So go check him out on YouTube, on Twitter, everywhere. Uh, and for myself, for Hot yes, Shot. Yes, I can't talk about it yet, though. <laughs> so for myself, for Kia, for Hot Shot, it's been another episode of Podcasters. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Anime Podcasters. If you would like to support the podcast, you can find audio downloads on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Google Play. If you would like to support the voices in this podcast, follow their links in the description and the Twitter handles on screen. See you next time, weeds. <laughs>